Coming up with a theory of everything that unifies uh, general relativity and quantum field theory is, uh, is uh, one of the big dreams of human civilization, us descendants of apes wondering about how this world works. So a lot of people dream. Uh, what are your thoughts about sort of other out there ideas on theories of everything or unifying theories? So there's a uh, quantum loop gravity uh, there's also more sort of uh, like a friend of mine, Eric Weinstein, beginning to propose something called geometric unity. So th these kinds of attempts, whether it's through mathematical physics or through other avenues, or with Stephen Wolfram, a more computational view of the universe. Again, in his case, it's these hypergraphs that are very tiny objects as well, uh, similarly as string theory, in tr trying to grapple with this world. What, what do you think? Is there any of these uh, theories that are compelling to you, that are interesting, that uh, may turn out to be true, or at least may turn out to contain ideas that are useful? Yes, I think the latter. I would say that the containing ideas that are true, is my opinion, was what these some of these ideas might be. For example, loop quantum gravity is to me not a complete theory of gravity in any sense, but they have some nuggets of truth in them. And Typically what I expect happen, and I have seen examples of this within string theory, aspects which we didn't think are part of string theory come to be part of it. For example, I'll give you one example. Mm -hmm. String was believed to be 10 dimensional. And then there was this 11 dimensional supergravity. And nobody know what the heck is that? <laughs> Why are we getting 11 dimensional supergravity where a string is saying it should be 10 dimensional? 11 was the maximal dimension you can have a supergravity, mm -hmm. but string was saying, sorry, we are, we're 10 dimensional. So for, for a while, we thought that theory is wrong because how could it be? Because string theory is definitely theory of everything. We later mm -hmm. learned that one of the circles of string theory itself was tiny, mm. that we had not appreciated that fact. And we discovered by doing thought experiments in string theory that there's gotta be an extra circle and that circle is connected to an 11 dimensional perspective. And that's what later on got called M theory. So. So, so there are these kind of things that you know we do not know what exactly string theory is. We're still learning. So we do not have a final formulation of string theory. It very well could be that different facets of different ideas come together, like loop quantum gravity or whatnot, but I wouldn't put them on par. Namely, loop quantum gravity is a, a scatter of ideas about what happens to space when they get very tiny. For example, you replace things by discrete data and try to quantize it and so on. And you know, it sounds like a natural idea to quantize space. You know, if, if you were naively trying to do quantum space, you might think about trying to take points and put them together in some uh, discrete fashion in some way that is reminiscent of loop quantum gravity. Uh, string theory is more subtle than that. For example, I will just give you an example. And this is the kind of thing that we didn't put in by hand, we got it out. Mm -hmm. And so it's more subtle than, so what happens if you squeeze the space to be smaller and smaller? Well, you think that after a certain distance, the notion of, distance should break down. You know, when you go smaller than Planck scale, should break down. What happens in string theory? We do not know the full answer to that, but we know the following. Namely, if you take a space and bring it smaller and smaller, if the box gets smaller than the Planck scale by a factor of 10, it is equivalent by the duality transformation to a space which is 10 times bigger. So there's a symmetry called uh, du uh, T duality, which takes L to one over L. Well, L is measured in Planck units, mm -hmm. or more precisely, string units. This inversion is a very subtle effect. And I would not have been, or any physicist would not have been able to design a theory which has this property, that when you make the space smaller, it is as if you're making it bigger. That That's means there is, no tr there is no experiment you can do to distinguish the size of the space. This is remarkable. For example, Einstein would have said, of course I can measure the size of the space. What do I do? Well, I take a flashlight, I, I send the light around, measure how long it takes for the light to go around the space and bring back and find the radius or circumference of the, the universe. What's the problem? I said, well, suppose you do that and you shrink it. He said, well, they get smaller and smaller. So what? I said, well, it turns out in string theory, there are two different kinds of photons. One photon measures one over L, the other one measures L. <laughs> and so this duality reformulates. Oh, and when the space gets smaller, it says, oh no, you better use the bigger perspective because the smaller one is harder to deal with. <laughs> so you do this one. So, so these examples of loop quantum gravity have none of these features. These features that I'm telling you about, we have learned from string theory, but they nevertheless have some of these ideas like topological as gravity aspects mm -hmm. are emphasized in the context of 
uh, loop quantum gravity in some form. And so these ideas might be there in some kernel, in some corners of string theory. In fact, we, I wrote a paper about topological string theory and some connections with potentially loop quantum gravity, which could be part of that. So there are little facets of connections. I wouldn't say they're complete, but I would say most probably what will happen to some of these ideas, the good ones at least, they will be absorbed within to, to string theory if, if they are correct. 